Hey everybody, this is Scott Meineke with the Iowa Association of Electric Cooperatives. Got a call the other day about replacing single bushing REA spec transformers with double bushing transformers. This was because of the supply chain issues we've been experiencing. Um, want to make sure that if you are going to do this, you want to contact your USDA representative for your RUS funding and make sure that you've got approval to do this. If you put these up, one of the RUS requirements is that you build to specification of the Rural Electrification Administration. These aren't going to meet that specification. Um, I was told by our rep in Iowa that that shouldn't be a problem uh, because of the supply chain issues. It makes sense to do this, but it's always good to ask for that permission and document that you have that permission before you begin. So what's the difference between a single bushing and a double bushing transformer? Well, obviously it's a number of bushings, right? We have two bushings on the left-hand transformer and one bushing on the right-hand transformer. It's also the hangers. The REA spec has two sets of hangers, one on the left and one on the right. The purpose of those hangers was you mount the transformer on a quadrant of the pole, tipping the secondary bushings towards the primary neutral. That eliminates some of the distance of ground wires that we have, and a lot of times it, it provides a shorter secondary, so it saves us a little bit on wire. Although it's not significant, it is a little bit of a savings, and that's the specification that we use. The transfer on the left is a single set of hangers on the back side, so it puts the secondaries out to the front. They're really good to work with when you're on an uh, overhead uh, transformer from a bucket, um, and, and really it's very simple to install them. The transfer on the right, right? Well, let's take a look at the one on the left. On a double bushing, the upper primary bushings, the upper left hand is the H1, and the upper right hand is the H2. On a single bushing transformer, the only insulated primary bushing is the H1. Well, it always takes two connections to make a transformer work, so the H2 is then the tank. So we used to ground the tank, we had the ground loop on the tank, and we, we made certain that the tank was always grounded properly, because if it wasn't grounded, that tank could become energized. It is the primary bushing, after all, so we could have primary voltage if any open occurred from the tank to the ground or system neutral. On the two bushing transformer, it's just the primary bushing. You can actually use either one of those primary bushings to connect to the primary, and the other one then goes to the system neutral. So you can feed the H1 or you can feed the H2. Either way, the other one that would then go to the system neutral and work fine. So whatever is convenient when you're making the connection. Other than this, there is no electrical difference between the transformers. As long as the nameplates have the same voltage ratings, uh, they do exactly the same thing. So since we don't have any specifications for single phase two bushing transformers in the REA spec book, the following guide is, a, is for the installation. It may take a bit more ground wire to make the ground loop since the secondary bushings will not be angled towards the primary neutral. All right, this is a basic diagram of how we're going to go ahead and make our connections on a conventional two bushing transformer. Now, of course, when we're making these ground connections, the primary cutout would be open and the primary jumper would be dropped. I only put those up here to show what uh, the finished product would look like. You could certainly use a different type of bracket. You could actually install, we always call them rabbit snares. Uh, if you have lugs on the backside of the two bushing transformer that you could mount a lightning arrestor on, you could put a lightning arrestor on the bushing that you're gonna feed and hook the fork and put a triple link fuse between it and the bushing and run the jumper directly up. Whatever's convenient and whatever you have is going to work just fine. On this one we have the ground loop started at the X2 bushing. We're going to go down. We're going to hit the lug directly below the X2 bushing. Now, if you have transformers that have ground straps on them, you wouldn't need to do this. There would be a bolted strap to that that would go up to the back side of the lug on the X2 bushing. If you don't have that, just put a tank ground in that lug itself. So run the jumper from the X2 to the ground lug directly below it. Continue it down and go to the tank ground lug on either the right or the left hand side. In this one, I've shown it going to the right but if it was more convenient to go to the left side and hit the lug there, that would be fine as well. 
go around the back side of the transformer, continue this with one solid wire, go around the back of the transformer, and make two connections as you go up towards the system neutral following the pole ground on the back side of that pole. Continue to the system neutral, hit the system neutral, squeeze a connection there. Now continue it on up to the H2 bushing. We're going to feed through that H2 bushing. So it's just pull the lug out, run the wire through it, continue down following the bushing down, go across the top of the tank and end in the X2 bushing. Just like we did with the ground loops on a single bushing transformer, we started, we went down around, two connections up the system ground on the pole, we go to the system neutral, and then we went right back to the X2. In this case, we're gonna to go to the transformer, follow the transformer up to the H1 bushing, go through the H1 bushing, across the top, and back down to the X2, and we've completed the loop. At this time, we've completed the connection. Right, so there's kind of the full thing together right there. Now, where do you put the transformer on the pole? Well, it depends on where the secondaries are. It's not as convenient for us this time. Um, kind of showed a, a diagram here that if it's off the back side of the pole, anywhere in that range, uh, as shown with the shadowed, shadowed triangle there, um, you can make those connections. And I would put the transformer on the opposite side, run the secondaries around, do your connections, whatever's good. Now, mounting the cutout on the pole, really whatever's convenient for that cutout. You can either feed the H1 or the H2, it does not matter. Whatever you do to one, you have to ground the other one. As I said, it really won't matter. If it's on the other side of the pole, well then feed the, you can, you can do it as shown here, whatever's convenient. Again, you can feed either the H1 or the H2. It does not matter at all. If it's on a dead end, you know, here I'm showing it uh, coming off the bottom. Um, I would hang the transformer on the other side of the secondary at that point. Um, however, it is entirely up to you. Uh, if, uh, if it's more convenient to put it on the other side, you can mount these on the quarter a little bit if you want to. It really won't matter. We just want to make sure we're, we're being consistent in what we're doing it and make sure that if you feed the H2 in this case, then the H1 gets grounded. If you feed the H1, then the H2 gets grounded. Either way, we'll continue that loop and always make sure we connect the primary neutral, the system neutral, and, and the secondary neutral together. So all together and, and hooked to the ground as well. Uh, we just do multi-grounded systems. If you have any other questions, hey, feel free to give me a call. Um, I'll try to work through all of these that we can.